Welcome back to Kamikaze Overdrive MMA Predictions. As always, I am your host, Scott Johnson. And on this episode of the show, we're taking a look at UFC on Fuel TV, Gustafson vs. Silva, which will take place live on April 14th from Stockholm, Sweden. On the show, I'll be breaking down the main event and co-main event. The rest of my predictions will be posted over at kamikazeoverdrive.net, so head over there and give them a read. Also available on the website will be my betting packs for this event, along with Kluvel's predictions. We'll be posting a free pick and putting his predictions in the bet shop as well. Also on the website, I'm hoping to expand my stable of predictors, and I'm currently giving a new predictor a tryout. He's doing Bellator 61 predictions. We'll see going forth. I'm hoping to start doing some Bellator picks. Won't be in video form, but they will be available on the site. Also on the site, I'm looking to expand the sports I cover with Kamikaze Overdrive. I've currently broken down a large group of applicants to three very capable predictors who are going to be focusing on the NHL, eventually MLB and NH and um, NFL. So make sure you check, check out KamikazeOverdrive.net. We'll be posting free picks along with posting betting prediction packs for each of these guys. They've done an excellent job in the tryouts, done a nice little job of breaking down all the fights. So please check out KamikazeOverdrive.net for all your NHL, MLB, and NFL prediction needs. And finally, before we move on, as always, thank you very much to all my sponsors, MMABettingOdds.com, CouchFighter.co, MMACrips.com, uh, Adrenaline Training Center as well, thank you very much, and the rest of the sites that post and host my videos, I appreciate you greatly. And of course, on the site, I post the links, you can check out those websites as well. And I think it's time to get to my first prediction. We kick the show off with a fight that is my Adrenaline Training Center certified overdrive fight of the night. In the UFC's middleweight division, 11-4-0 Brian All-American Stan battles 19-8-0 Alessio Legionaria Sakara. Both men are coming off losses. Stan was submitted by Chael Sonnen and Sakara lost a decision to Chris Weidman. Alessio is a true UFC veteran with 13 fights inside the octagon going all the way back to 2005. Unfortunately, he struggled with various ailments and injuries, only fighting once a year since 2009 and is entering this bout off an ACL tear that has kept him away from the cage for over 12 months. During that time, Sakara had a pretty decent run, compiling a 4-1 record before the Weidman defeat, and Brian Stan mirrored Alessio's success, carrying a 5-1 mark into the Sun and fight. Statistically, both men have won the majority of their fights by knockout or TKO, Sakara with 9 and Stan with 8. Alessio's style is striking base with an 8-1 pro boxing record, and he has diversified his attack, incorporating kicks and clinch work. As a result of Alessio's boxing background, he has impressive technique engaging his opponents with crisp combinations. Against Wybin, he attacked with a beautiful series of hooks, landing three consecutively before finishing with a low kick, and he appears to favor his left hook as a weapon of choice. He will attack the body with both kicks and punches, he throws knees from the clinch, and stop Joe Vitapo with a nice head kick. As good as Sakara's striking is, he has suffered three knockout defeats against Drew McFetteries, Houston Alexander, and Chris Lieben, which is something he will need to be careful against against Brian Stan. Stan has been knocked out once in his past by Steve Cantwell, whom, like Sakara, has excellent striking technique. But Stan does hold the edge in that matchup 2-1, including a 41-second knockout victory in their first meeting. Stan's development as a fighter has been impressive, and his knockout wins over the granite-chinned Chris Lieben and George Santiago are a testament to his toughness. Lieben is well known as a brawler, but Stan matched his gritty style, hurting him with a short right and finishing him off with a knee along with some serious ground and pound. Against Santiago, it was a much more technical fight where he showed... Uh, showcased a nice 1-2 combo, finishing with a low kick. He used a lot of feints, dropped Jorge in the first round with a left, and finished him with a short right in the second round. Both men are predominantly strikers, and I don't anticipate this fight going to the ground too often. Stan has had trouble with powerful wrestlers like Phil Davis and Chael Sonnen, but this shouldn't be an issue, issue against Sakara. Conversely, as mentioned above, Sakara has been knocked out on multiple occasions by fighters with inferior striking technique, but the ability to use their power to turn the fight into a brawl. Even at distance, Sakara has a tendency to duck his head when striking, which leaves him vulnerable to a well-timed uppercut, which Stan was able to hurt Santiago with. In addition, Alessio's forward push while striking leaves him open to, to a counter strike, and Stan used a powerful short right to counter both Lehman and Santiago as they moved forward. Alessio's vulnerability to power is the biggest issue in this matchup. If he can stay on the outside and outpoint Stan, he could win a decision. But Stan should be able to pressure him and eventually land with power. So my prediction is Brian Stan to defeat Alessio Sakara by TKO. 
In the main event of the evening, Alexander the Mauler Gustafson, 13-1-0, will battle the returning Tiago Silva, 14-2-0. Silva has been out of action for over a year after defeating Brandon Vera in a fight that was eventually switched to a no contest, while Gustafson has been rolling, winning four in a row. For Tiago Silva, this fight will answer a few significant questions. Will the long layoff hurt his performance? How effective can he be when he's 100% healthy? And where does he rank in the heavily stacked light heavyweight division? The last question being potentially the most important. Silva ha was making a push to the upper echelon of the division, but a pair of defeats to Leoto Machida and Rashad Evans and the eventual suspension slowed his progress. This is a huge fight for Alex Gustafson, who with the exception of the Phil Davis setback, has smashed through the competition in a similar fashion to the current divisional champion John Jones. Both men are proven finishers. Silva has either knocked out or submitted his opponents in 13 of his 14 wins, while Gustafsson has done the same in 12 of his 13 victories. Both men have shown lethal striking skills, winning the majority of their fights by knockout. The sweet stopping Matt Hamill, Jared Hammond, and most recently Vladi Matyushenko, while Silva holds wins over Keith Jardine and Houston Alexander. Silva has devastating power and showed against Rashad Evans that all he needs is to land once to change the complexion of a fight hurting and he nearly finished Rashad in the third with a quick right. Silva is most effective when he stalks his opponent, constantly pushing forward. He did an excellent job of cutting off the cage against Keith Jardine, limiting Jardine's space, and eventually catching him with a counter left hook for the knockout. As good as Thiago is with his striking against both Machida and Evans, he failed to adapt his approach when his opponents were able to neutralize his aggression with movement and takedowns, respectively. Gustafson is also a pretty good striker. He has a nice right hand, low kick combo, will incorporate a head kick and front kick, and did a lot of damage against Matt Hamill in flurries that included a very nasty uppercut. The Mauler has shown good lateral movement working around the outer diameter of the cage, which along with his us uh, usual height and reach advantage has created problems for his opponents when trying to close the distance. He has seemed vulnerable a little bit at least to a lead left, Hamill was able to land his left jab with regularity, and he has a tendency to leave his hands spread apart, which could give Silva an opening to attack down the middle. On the mat, neither man has significant submission totals, but both are still quite talented. Alexander has submission wins over James Tahuna and Cyril Diabati, where he displayed impressive top control, smooth transitions, and good finishing instincts. Part of his enhanced ground game can be attributed to his loss to Phil Davis, where after being submitted by Davis, Gustafson trained with the collegiate wrestling uh, standout and improved his ground game. Gustafson has excellent takedown skills using a single leg and a high crotch takedown that puts him immediately inside control upon completion. Now, Thiago Silva is a BJJ black belt, and he only has two wins by tap out, and one of them was a submission to strikes. Thiago showed his ground skills in the Vera fight, taking Vera down with regularity and maintaining control while landing punishing strikes from the top. On the negative side, Rashad Evans was able to take him down eight times and cap him on his back. This noticeably frustrated and fatigued Tiago, eventually costing him the decision. Tiago has the skills to beat Gustafson, especially if he's able to cut off the cage and land with power. That being said, Tiago is a successful front runner, but seems to struggle when faced with adversity, as was the case against both Evans and Machida. Gustafson's movement, along with his speed, reach, and height, should prevent Silva for, from landing with consistency. Gustafson will also mix things up with cl by clinching and using takedowns to wear out the Brazilian. There are simply too many question marks to back Silva, and Gustafson will be buoyed by a de deafening home crowd in Sweden. So my prediction is Alexander Gustafson to wear down Thiago Silva and earn the eventual submission victory. Welcome back to Kamikaze Countdown. And what I want to talk about is Strike Force, in particular, the women's division. This is coming on the heels of Ronda Rousey defeating Misha Tate for the women's 135 pound title, and also Sarah Kaufman defeating Alexis Davis in what turned out to be a, a title shot matchup, which will give the, uh, the former champ, Sarah Kaufman, a matchup. Both Canadian girls, they put on an excellent fight. And that's what these two matchups showed. The women's division is improving, it's progressing. And they showed they both can show a, have, a, have a talented matchup, a long, entertaining matchup. They're both very good fights, potentially the two best fights on the card. And, of course, there's always that issue, will women's MMA find a home in the octagon? Dana White seems to be a little bit against it, at least. He feels the talent pool isn't there yet. 
I feel it's only a matter of time before they start incorporating more and more fighters, just like every other sport and every other division. As the popularity of the sport grows and the notoriety of it grows, more people get into it, the talent pool will expand, and there will be a demand for it. I think when Strike Force is eventually moved over and, and folded up and moved folded into the UFC, you will see the women's division joining them. I actually would like to see the women's division kind of be melded into one. You've got the 145s and the 135s. How about we make a 140-pound women's division? Just call it the women's division. This will bring some 145ers down, make it a little easier for them to make the weight. They're not going to be that much bigger than 135ers, and it should be, and it'll, it'll definitely expand the talent pool. Either way, I think it has a future inside the octagon. Lorenzo Fertitta seems to be in favor of it. I am as well. I put a poll on the kamikazeoverdrive.net whether we'll find a home in the octagon. Not a lot of response so far, but currently people do feel that it is women's MMA will be in the UFC eventually. Another thing, check out on the website as well. I did a quick article on potential free agent strike force who could go about signing to improve their divisions, create some interest, and if they had any long-term plans, Zufa had any long-term plans for maintaining the second promotion, these are the fighters they could go out to add. It would bring some interest. Anthony Johnson being one of them, the middleweight division, giving him a second opportunity. A couple other guys out there I think would definitely do a nice job in Strike Force. Either way, please check that out. As always, give me your comments. Let me know what you think. Kamikaze Countdown. Thanks for watching. So those are two of my predictions for UFC on Fuel TV, Gustafson versus Silva. The rest of the predictions available over at KamikazeOverdrive.net, as well as Klubel's picks, my betting breakdowns. Hopefully there'll be some Bellator. I'll get this video before the Bellator event this weekend, and you can check out the predictions for that show. And as always, thank you very much to all of my sponsors. I greatly appreciate when you host and post my videos. This has been a pretty short video. That's what I'm trying to do, cut them down a little bit. So again, check out KamikazeOverdrive.net. NHL picks, eventually MLB picks, and NFL picks. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you right back here for UFC 145.